tennis court. The construction of tennis courts begins with the construction of the base. This is a very important step, since the quality of the base determines the service life of the product. The workers dig the trench, the depth of which usually doesn't exceed 60 centimeters. A layer of slaked lime or other fungicide is then applied. It's a chemical that prevents vegetation from germinating. The next layer is a waterproof material and a sand cushion about 10 centimeters thick. Then concrete or claydite concrete is poured over the sand. The surface is preliminarily reinforced. In order for the tennis court to be of high quality, the concrete is poured without interruption in one cycle. This eliminates the presence of surface joints. Before the surface finishes drying, it is leveled. The use of laser leveling technology considerably accelerates the process. Special equipment uses lasers and sensors that allow the operators to produce a perfectly flat surface. It should be noted that the surface must have a slight inclination. This will prevent rainwater from accumulating in puddles. After the drying process, which lasts approximately a month, the surface is polished. A layer of between 2 and 4 millimeters of primer is applied. The last stage of the construction is the placement of the artificial surface. It can be grass or, as in this case, a special material to create a hard tennis court. It's a water acrylic solution. It's usually applied in several layers, from 3 to 12, and each layer can have its own special function. For example, the alignment of the base, the softening of the surface, and the coloration of the school turf is the most popular cover of modern football fields. Its advantages include that it's easy to maintain and has a perfectly flat surface. In addition, it doesn't suffer from being walked on and doesn't need to be watered. High-quality artificial turf, like the one shown in the video, does not shine either. On the outside, it's almost indistinguishable from real grass. The raw material for the artificial grass is polypropylene or polyethylene. The fibers are manufactured through the extrusion process. In their original form, they are enormous rolls of plastic. Special machines make bundles of fiber and then weave them together to create a wide band. For the coating to be strong and durable, a latex base is applied to the inside of the covering. After the artificial turf has dried and tested for quality, it's rolled up. It is then taken to these stadiums and areas where the fields will be installed, in this case, the football field. The weight of one of these rolls can reach one ton, so specially equipped loaders are used for spreading it. Then, the layers must be spread and leveled manually. Of course, the joints must be connected to each other. A special adhesive is used for this and pressure is applied. The markings are made of exactly the same grass, but from white fiber. To do this, the grooves are cut into the finished coating. They're then filled with glue and marking strips. The final step is the application of filler materials such as sand and rubber granules and the final grooming. These procedures increase the stability, wear resistance and stiffness of the field. Basketball Court There are several materials available for making basketball courts. However, parquet is the benchmark, the highest quality material. It's eco-friendly and prestigious. Proper production and installation will give the basketball court between 60 and 70 years of operation. The material is taken to the stadiums in the form of separate sheets. It's not an easy task to put them together either. Since wood is a rather fragile material, there is a risk of damaging the parquet when it's laid carelessly. Tools such as a sledgehammer, a pounding block, a drift pin, and a hammer are used for installation. Each panel has slots on all four sides. All of these tools are needed to insert one slot into the other, and then combine them to make the panels fit as tightly as possible. The wood is rigid enough and the construction must be strong. This is why parquet is laid on an elastic subfloor, or on a system of bars and rubber gaskets. Sometimes, to smooth the surface, once the installation is finished, it is polished. Next, there's a mandatory stage designed to increase the durability and aesthetics of the basketball court. This is a wood coating with special varnishes and oils in several layers. 
After the lacquer has dried, if necessary, drawings and markings are applied to the floor. Ice Skating Rink Ice hockey and figure skating rinks are not always created in specially designed places. Sometimes, as in this case, you have to work in ordinary and large stadiums. The first stage, before construction even begins, consists of placing an enormous sheet of plastic. This is necessary for insulation. The next layer is the plastic tubes, which are taken to the construction site in the form of a roll. In this particular case, 53 kilometers of pipes were used for construction. They are filled with antifreeze. This is a special liquid which can be cooled considerably without turning into ice. A powerful liquid cooling device reduces the antifreeze temperature below zero degrees Celsius in five seconds. Then, the field becomes a huge generator of cold. A similar technology, by the way, is used in domestic refrigerators. The next step is to start creating ice, which requires filling the entire site with water. In this case, 50,000 liters were needed. It should be noted that the builders don't immediately pour all this water into the building site. To prevent air bubbles from forming in the ice, the water must be placed in thin layers and then you have to wait until it freezes. The prepared ice rink usually consists of at least 30 of these ice layers. In the last layers of the water, white paint is added to cover the pink tubes with antifreeze. The markings are applied during the creation of the ice rink. Two more centimeters of ice are placed on top of this layer. Volleyball Court There are a number of varieties of volleyball. For example, it's played on sand and snow. Classic volleyball is one in which participants compete on specially constructed courts. The video shows a time-lapse construction of the volleyball court, as well as these stands. Special crumb rubber mats are placed on a concrete or wooden base. They are then spackled. A polyurethane filling layer is then applied. The only thing left to do is to varnish the surface. Very often, wood, plastic and special mixtures are also used as the final coating. We'd also like to talk about building beach volleyball courts. As you may have guessed, special sand is used. It's carefully sieved, and there's not a single stone or shell in all of this mass. The proper filling for a volleyball court consists of 96% quartz. At the same time, the size of the grain of the sand doesn't exceed 2 millimeters. Elastic bands are generally used to create the boundaries of the court. This is a soft and elastic material that doesn't harm the players. It should be noted that the posts of the nets are installed before the site is filled with sand in order to guarantee stability. Hey, stop being lazy, it's time to use that brain of yours. Welcome to Brain Time. Incredible facts from the past, the present, and even the future. The power of nature and wild animals. Amazing facts and unsolved mysteries. You'll find all this and much more here. Subscribe now, you won't regret it.